Hello, Sillaholics, and welcome to Sillaholics Anonymous. In this video, I'm going to give you another quick tutorial. If this is your first time here and you've never vi viewed any of my videos, I do hope that you enjoy the contents of this video and will choose to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you are notified whenever I release new content. If you are a subscriber, thank you for the support and welcome back. So we are going to continue in my series of quick tips and quick tutorials. In this one, I'm going to show you how to create color swatches um, or color charts because you can make a full color chart of what's available in the Silhouette Studio color palette so that you know how those colors print. And I'm also going to show you when you are working with a project and you want to kind of match the colors to your text and things like that, that it's in that, like in those pictures or in those images, how to make color swatches from that. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go back over here. All right. So your color swatches can be any shape. If you wanted them to be a butterfly, you could trace a, you know, the outline of a butterfly anything like that. You want to come over here to the um, flexi shapes. If you have the upgraded versions that allow you to have them, you can make them hearts, trees, you can make them, you know, little flower looking things, stars, anything that you can fill with a um, color you can use to make your color swatches. If you want to trace like maybe an outline of a shirt, if you do t-shirts and things like that and fill it with colors like that. But I'm just going to use a basic rectangle. We're going to go ahead and click on the rectangle tool and we're going to make a box. Very easy, very simple. I'm going to focus on the gradients uh, right now in this video, but you do the same thing with the, um, the solid colors. And if you wanted to do it with the patterns that are there, you could do it. But the more you add patterns, your patterns folder could become outdated. So I probably wouldn't necessarily do those. But if you want to try and start with the patterns that's there, you can definitely do that as well. All right, so that I can easily duplicate this, I'm going to um, just use my rep well my yeah, my replicate tool. I wasn't gonna use keyboard shortcuts, but I'll keep it really simple. And we're gonna go to the replicate panel. This also helps you kind of learn how this works. And we're going to do a row of four. All right, so it'll give you four. It won't give you four copies. It'll make it to where there's four total. So it'll give you three copies. If you did a row of three, it'll add two um, objects to it. I'm going to come up here and add one more. And because I want this to stay within my print border, um, I do have that on. If you don't know how to do that, once you go over to your page setup, just turn on your print border. Then make sure that you go to your print settings and... Um, well, I'll, just, I'll show you. This is a quick tutorial. So we have about 15 minutes. You know, the aim is 15 minutes or less. So to make sure that your print border is showing the correct way, you're going to go file, um, print. Whatever printer you use, you will go to that printer. And you're going to go to preferences. You'll select the page size that you're going to print this out on. And then you would hit OK. You would hit apply and then cancel because you don't want to actually print. You just want the uh, box to change. So I'm going to change that real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. We're going to go preference. I'm going to make this 11 by 17. Okay. Apply and then cancel. And you'll see my line moves. I don't see the line on the right side and the bottom. I'm going to go back to print. I'm even going to change my printer on this one. Oh, I don't have my HP on this computer. Okay, so we're just going to go back to this and we're going to go preferences. 11. Okay, apply, cancel, and you'll see that it jumps back. All right, now let's get back into setting up these swatches. We're then going to select all of them come over to our transform and we're going to space horizontally. That's if you want a space in between. If you don't want a space in between, you can make them to where they are all like right next to each other. And it also probably would give you a bit, um, a bigger swatch. So let's say if I went like this and now I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut just to kind of get these in there, I would select them all and then drag it to the edge. 
So you do get a bigger swatch if you want to do it that way and kind of have no space in between it. That's totally up to you. Um, I'm going to take these and I'm going to fill them with white. The reason for that is it makes it easier to select that box when I want to fill it with color. If you don't have color in it, you would have to have your mouse right over the line, like the very edge of it. It's a lot easier to select in the middle to select anything that's filled with a color, a shape, a, I mean, a color, a pattern, a gradient, anything like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now I'm going to, so that I don't have to, you can do this where you can manually move it, but I really don't want to have to move this. So I'm going to take a box and I'm just going to put a really thin one right here and put it to the bottom of these. What this is going to do is create that gap for me automatically. All right, I'm going to take that and I'm going to just fill it with, uh oh, wrong part. Let's click on that again. I'm going to fill it with the color. And in this, you're also going to learn about selecting by color because you're going to see how I'm going to delete all of those all at one time. So now I'm going to select the bar that I fill with color and my white swatches, and I'm going to replicate it, you know, down. So we're going to come back over to the replicate window and let's do a column of four. So to give us three repeats and let's do it again. I don't know exactly how many swatches are over there, but I'll just do a couple of them. And then here I can delete these. Now to delete all of those blue ones, I can go on and click it or I can go to edit, select by color, go to fill, and I will choose that color and hit delete and it's going to delete all of those for me. So pretty cool. Now let's fill these in. Let's go over to our paint palette. I'm gonna start with gradients because uh, that was the last video that I did and there was a suggestion for this video. So we're gonna go with the gradients. All you're gonna do, um, you can also move this a little bit closer. Click, 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 click. That's all you're gonna do. Just fill each, each um, shape or square, rectangle, whichever one you made with the color and then you're going to print it. That way you know exactly what that particular gradient will look like because we cannot change the colors, like we can't make them specific colors or add color code to these. You can customize it and you can use the advanced option to um, mix colors and things like that, but you can't really put the color code in to know exactly what that color will be. So this is a way like with the pre-made gradients to be able to know what colors they are like that's programmed into the, into the system. So we're just going to fill these. And you can do the same thing for your solid colors if you want to match what's in the color palette already. Where am I? <laughs> uh, this one, there we go. And with these, um, whatever you use to design, if you design the same way I talked about with the other color charts that you get that have the um, hex codes on them. If you print to cardstock and you do a lot of stuff with cardstock, print this out on the print settings that you normally would use um, on the cardstock that you would use. If you do sublimation, print this out um, on your sublimation paper and sublimate it to a felt sheet. That's going to pretty much probably be the best thing to do. Or you can get fabric or you can get a shirt. If you have an old shirt, maybe a shirt that you messed up a design on the front on, maybe you want to take that shirt and sublimate the color chart onto it so that you always have a reference. 
Um, if you use Jet Pro 3G, you want to, um, you know, sacrifice one of those sheets. You'll probably be better off making these a little bit smaller. That way you only take up one Jet Pro 3G sheet, depending if you buy, if you purchase 8.5 by 11 or 11 by 17 and be able to take this, um, print it on it and then just press it. You can even press it right there on the backing that it's on. You don't have to take it off and put it onto a shirt, but if you want to, you can. But that's how you would do. You would just go ahead and continue to fill in with all of these. If you get to a point and let's say you're here and you know you don't have any more space, you can either duplicate it below or just make a duplicate of this one. So let's go and go over to here and let's shift it, hold down shift and kind of move that over. And then you can start to fill these in to make sure that you know you don't forget which color you're on. Just go to white, make them all white and continue to fill them in, all right? Now, if you want to create a swatch, I'm gonna show my age right now because I already kind of like, kind of sort of looked up uh, an image that I wanted to bring in and sample the colors for. If you are of my time, you know what the Wuzzles are. This was like one of my favorite book series ever. Uh, like when um, the shows and stuff came out, I love uh, the Wuzzles. So I'm really, really showing my age right now. So we're just going to click on here. Um, I don't know if they have any really good, good, like clear images. That one's not too bad. Um, but this is a really, really old one, so it's probably going to be really hard to get good images from it. So we're going to right-click. I'm going to copy. I'm going to paste that here. And when you are designing, you would do the same thing, kind of the same thing that we would do here. So to create swatches, we're going to just make a square. I like to make squares. Hold down Shift. And let's make a couple copies. I'm going to use my keyboard shortcuts here. So Control and my down arrow. All right. We're gonna come over to our fill color where we have our paint dropper. And again, fill it with white, makes it easier to select them. And we're gonna just sample colors. Oops. And you can move your paint dropper around, uh, see which kind of, like, you know, if you want the darker one, you want different tones. So you can really just create a swatch and you choose how many colors you want to use from the image. And that way, when you are filling in your text and things like that, you are keeping everything kind of consistent. So if I were to go and type out text, so let's just go in and go... I could then come here, I already have my, my swatches, and I would be able to select which color I want. If you have Designer Edition or above, you have what's called the Properties Dropper. I talked about this in a video a, a little while back, and what you can do is you just click on your dropper and select here, and it's gonna give you the color as well as remove the line color. So those are ways that you can utilize your swatches with your pictures, and that way when you're creating um, whether it's designs for sublimation or invitations, whatever digital design you're creating, your colors will match your images and you don't have to kind of second guess it. All right, guys, hopefully this um, quick tutorial helped. If you have any suggestions for other quick tutorials, do not hesitate to leave them as a comment below. Don't forget to thumbs up this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, leave me a comment. And also, if you are on Facebook, join me over on my Facebook page, Silaholics Anonymous, or send a request to join my Facebook group, Silaholics Anonymous, Silhouette Help. The link for that is in the description box. All right, guys, until next time, have a great one.